Welcome again to The Past is a Foreign Country, the show where we look at the top 40 for this week from a random year long ago and rate what's great and denigrate the unfortunate. And we've got plenty of both this week as we check out the Colour Radio 4IP chart for the week ending January 22nd, 1971. Number 10, Lady de Barnville, Cat Stevens. Oh, he of the smouldery eyes and the dark wavy hair and the slightly too perfect beard, kicked off a run of folky, quasi-mystical hits with this tribute to a girlfriend who left him for a month to work in New York and he decided was dead. I remember huge post rocking on the wall of my teenage cousin's bedroom in Macravat, and his later albums, T for the Tillerman or Catch Ball at Four, being unavoidable at the kind of parties where kids would light the room with lamps stolen from the little tents telephone workers used to cover the holes in the ground, and we young kids never really understood. Next thing I knew, he was calling for people to cut off Salman Rushdie's head. What a delightful chap. 9. Comic Conversations, Johnny Farnham. At the risk of outraging every man in this country my age who still has a mullet, this is the best record John Farnham ever made. He kicked off what seemed like a golden run of singles here in almost total cultural ubiquity, based on the fact that he knew the best songs for him to take him on, and when to take a risk by mixing it up with that song. This vaguely creepy little pocket soap opera is not only a beloved national treasure's best, it's one of the best Australian records of the whole 1970s. Light Across the Valley, Hans Paulson. House-trained hippie Hans had his second and final hit with this jaunty ode to the kind of things hippies sing jaunty odes to. I don't know what the hippies sing about. Lentils? How nice their headbands are? Anyway, this record did much better on the 4IP colour radio chart, maxing out at number 5, where it only made number 39 on the national chart. Hans went off to live on some kind of commune in Scotland after this, where he went through a period of ill health but got better and became a music therapist. Hooray for Hans! Number 7, Gasoline Alley Bread by The Hollies. One of the central glories of the UK scene in the 1960s and early 1970s, The Hollies had their 16th Australian Top 40 hit with this song written by the two Rogers, Cook and Greenaway, the most reliable of hit makers who later gave The Hollies one of their most memorable hits in Long Cool Woman in a Black Dress. While all of the check marks are here on the song, to me it's just not quite a Hollies record. It lacks their most strongly defining feature, that sense of breezy optimism, that urban aspirationalism, that this being a grim grey slice of faux kitchen sink drama neglects. Maybe the new decade's souring sunny sensibilities of the 60s played some part, but it just isn't as pleasurable as any one of two dozen other Holly's cuts. One thing I will say is that Tony Hicks, the Holly's longtime guitarist, is one of the most underrated players from the 1960s scene. I know George Harrison dug him to the max, and if you listen under the super sweet harmonies on these wonderful records, he's really doing some great work. Check out a song called On a Carousel for an example. That's where I went wrong, the Poppy family. Wow. This might just be the worst single record we've encountered in our countdown series so far. I mean, it's a mix of cheesy strings, countrified picking, easy listening backing vocals and vague psychedelia, topped off by a singer who sounds like she's somewhat the worse for drink is bad enough. But the sack of woe tale the lyrics semi-comprehensibly try to sell you is just too much. Incredibly bad music. So, some fun, free and five minutes from wherever you live type facts before we plunge into the top five. This week's Rocket Up the Charts was the number one bound push bike song by The Mixtures, which pedaled from number 29 to number 11. And the toppler from the top was Morning Much Better by noted banjo enthusiasts Ten Wheel Drive. They weren't, in all actuality, a bad band, Ten Wheel Drive. Big week for Aussie music as three all-time classics entered the charts this week. Zoot with their semi-metal version of Eleanor Rigby, which proved that nothing succeeded like excess. Mr. America by Russell Morris and the Masters Apprentices with their timeless favourites of ad executives everywhere, Because I Love You. 
The current number ones in the US and England were Knock Three Times by Dawn, more on this later, and Grandad by Clive They Don't Like It Up'em Captain Dunn, respectively. Number one album in town was Abraxas by Santana, spending its solitary week aloft after vanquishing Led Zeppelin III. Checking in at number five was Song of Joy by Miguel Rios, which reached just apogee this week. I seem to recall this being unavoidable on the radio at the time. Curiously, the old Ludwig van doesn't get a writer's credit. Rios has had an interesting career to say the least, starting out a bit like the Cliff Richard of Spain, getting busted for hash at the peak of his career, which under General Franco no one wanted to do, fronting a prog rock outfit, recording the then biggest selling album ever by a Spanish artist and becoming a figurehead of the cultural re-emergence that happened in Spain in the post-Franco years. What a cool dude. Leaping into the top 10 this week is the ebullient Vegas showroom Here We Come stylings of Dawn with the inevitable Tony Orlando then still invisibly appended with the aforementioned knock three times. I'm trying to picture the audience who would have bought this record. It's infantile, but it isn't wholly bubblegum. It's pop, but it is utterly bereft of sophistication. It's hooky, but completely unmemorable. And it's facile, but not offensively so. It's not so much a bad record as it is unnecessary. And it sold six million copies. The New Seekers had a big hit with Melanie Safka's What Have They Done To My Song Ma, which was peaking this week at 3 before a big drop to 10 next week. It's another one of those hippy dippy grievance without solution type songs that vaguely suggest things were better in the good old days and lord knows it's better than Knock Three Times or the Poopy Family. But it doesn't really make much of a case for my hometown as the go against the tide city of pop sophisticates I remember us all as. Oh and Ray Charles did a cover version of the song in 1972 which I guess if brother Ray did it makes it alright. Top Tony Hicks aficionado George Harrison was up to number two this week with his in no way anything like he's so fine hurry hit My Sweet Lord, the 377th biggest ever hit in the oversized sleepy country town I call home. Nationally, it was the second biggest hit of the year. The attendant album, All Things Must Pass, was soon going to spend two months atop the local charts and Georgie Mania was sweeping the country. And at number one... I Think I Love You by the Partridge Family. Absolute beast of a record, a behemoth, one of the very greatest and one of the final bubblegum hits. Backed by the Wrecking Crew, here's a record laser targeted to every hormonal 16 year old in the country. In 1974, when singer David Cassidy toured, his appearances spawned riots, especially one in Melbourne that led to calls for him to be deported from the country. As much as I hate to use the word iconic, this record is an iconic one. Even as it came at the ringing down of the bubblegum era, it showed that the values that informed the quality pop records of the 60s were still alive in the 70s and still had a home to go to. Thus ends our pleasant idyll in the far gone world of 1971. What a time of it we had. Two Australian acts in the top 10, Hippie Hans and a man now universally known as Farnsey. Four English acts, two Americans, a Canadian and one from Spain. The super secret scoring algorithm ranks this week at a score of a slightly disappointing 5.3 out of 10. I think the Poppy family may have run down some of the numbers there. So. Where were you in 1971? Who were you in 1971? Were you even in 1971? Do share with us in comments and do share with us your thoughts on this. Sometimes good, sometimes bad, always remarkable music. To that end, all that needs to be said at this point is do come back next week and we'll see where we end up in our next installment of The Past is a foreign country.